You ready for this jelly? Coming right up on Weekend at the Cottage. Welcome to Weekend at the Cottage. I'm Nick Manoilovich. Today, a remarkable home canning recipe. We're gonna make Red Path Sugar's delicious strawberry rhubarb jelly. You are going to love it. Okay, everybody, who's ready to make jelly? I know I am. Let's get started. I'll be working through this recipe step by step, but if at any point you're kind of thinking, I want a bit more information, Nick, just head to weekendatthecottage.com. I'll list the full recipe plus additional tips and photos for you to reference. This recipe happens in two parts. In part one, we're gonna take strawberries and rhubarb and create a very robust flavored juice. And then part two, following day, we're gonna cook that juice down with granulated sugar, powdered pectin and vanilla to create our wonderful jelly. Let's talk about these strawberries. If you can purchase locally grown strawberries, all the better when you cut them open. They have that beautiful ruby red color, fantastic. We're gonna bring our strawberries home, give them a rinse, we're gonna hull them and then roughly chop them. You're gonna need six cups of chopped strawberries for the recipe. Pucker up. This recipe is made using rhubarb, that tangy perennial vegetable. Again, if you can get locally grown, all the better. We're bringing our rhubarb home. We're gonna trim away and discard the leaves. Then give your rhubarb a rinse, roughly chop it. Same quantity as the strawberries, six cups of chopped rhubarb. Next step is to cook the strawberries and rhubarb. I'm placing them into a heavy bottomed six quart pot along with two cups of water. Next step, over to stove top, stove on high. We're gonna bring it to a boil. Give it a stir, then reduce to simmer. We're gonna cook for 20 minutes. Have a ladle handy. I want you to skim away any of the foam that comes up to the top, place it into a bowl. We'll discard that foam. After the strawberries and rhubarb have simmered for 20 minutes, we're bringing the pot over to a workstation. Now we need to strain that liquid. I have a large measure into which I'm placing a strainer. In that strainer, three sheets of cheesecloth. Now carefully and slowly, we're gonna transfer that liquid through our strainer. It's gonna drip down into that measure. Expert tip, don't squeeze that cheesecloth together. If you do, the pulp's gonna go down into that liquid, which will make your jelly cloudy. So just leave it alone. I like to place it on the counter for one hour just to drip. Then we're gonna cover it with wrap and place it into the fridge overnight. Now we're ready for part two the following day. We continue the recipe by taking the liquid out of the fridge over to your work surface. We're gonna take away that strainer, discard the cheesecloth and fruit. I like to give the liquid a stir and then we're measuring out four cups of that strawberry rhubarb juice. Now we pour that juice back into our heavy bottom six quart pot, pour the juice in and then we're adding four tablespoons of powdered pectin. Now we're taking one vanilla pod, I'm gonna split it down the middle, then we take a knife, draw it on the inside, removing those vanilla seeds, do the other side as well. The seeds go into the pot. I also place the pods in the pot just to give this jelly an extra little bit of flavor. Next we take a wooden spoon. We're gonna give that mixture a stir until the pectin dissolves. Now it's time to measure out our granulated sugar. I have three and a half cups granulated sugar, once our sugar is measured, last thing to do, sterilize our jars, rings, and lids. I'm using three different jars today. I love this tall 250. I love this squat 250 milliliter size, but I especially like these very tiny 125 milliliter size jars. Uh, these make really nice gifts. You'll see this in a little bit. Now we head to stove top and cook our jelly. Next, we place the pot on stove top. Temperature goes to high. We're gonna stir this mixture until it comes to a boil. 
When it does, we're gonna gradually add our sugar, keep stirring until it dissolves, then it's gonna come to a boil. When it comes to a boil, it needs to be a rolling boil for one minute. It'll kinda of come up in the pot and go down, come up a couple more times and go down. After that minute, we can take our pot away from the stove and place it onto your work surface. Before transferring the jelly into the jars, two things. Remember that vanilla pod? I'm taking out both halves of that vanilla pod and then also taking a strainer or ladle and you're just gonna remove any of the scum off the top of the jelly. Now I have a sterilized funnel and ladle onto our first jar. I'm gonna ladle in quantity of the jelly and you add enough until you have about a quarter of an inch of headroom at the top. Transfer the funnel over to the next and you continue ladling this very beautiful strawberry rhubarb jelly into your jars. Funnel ladle pot can go to one side. I'm taking a clean dish towel and then carefully just wiping the top of every jar. You don't want any little drips at this point. We're then gonna take our sterilized lids, place the lids on top of each jar, take your sterilized rings and then add the ring and just turn it finger tight, not really tight, just finger tight. Once all of your rings are done, this entire process is done. But now you've gotta wait. Let the jelly set for 24 hours. Yay! <laughs> Once they do set, then comes the fun part, what to do with them. You can add little tiny caps like I have with a little tag, I love you. Give these to friends, they're gonna love you back, trust me. How about a couple of ways to enjoy this very delicious strawberry rhubarb jelly? Let's start with the classic. We're taking two pieces of white bread. I'm gonna do a spread of creamy peanut butter on one and then oh, adding a dollop of our jelly. Just spread it out. Look at that, the classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mmm, that's delicious. Okay, how about another way to enjoy this? How about warmed cheddar cornmeal muffins? Do a little swipe of butter and then add a dollop of our jelly. Oh, these muffins, mmm, they taste so much better with this jelly on them. Another idea, your next good morning. How about we toast up a bagel and then add cream cheese and then some of this beautiful jelly. Mmm. Mmm, that's really tasty. Finally, get-togethers. Let's say you're doing charcuterie and cheese with grapes and then this jelly. You can take a little toast point, add a beautiful soft cheese, and then a little dollop of our strawberry rhubarb jelly. But fair warning, this strawberry rhubarb jelly might disappear before your guests do. More information on this recipe and tons more available at weekendatthecottage.com. Check out this video and tons more on our dedicated YouTube channel. Finally, find us on your favorite social media platforms, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Oh yeah, told ya, everybody's ready for this jelly. Enjoy.